One country, two systems is the biggest respect for Taiwan. Let's bring Taiwan home in our lifetime. These are the words from a woman in Taiwan who has been fighting for her voice not to be muzzled. A former host of a popular political show, she had to go off air in June 2019 because of her staunch support for reunification. Why is her voice not being tolerated by the Taiwan authorities? What does the wider world need to know about their efforts to strip young people in Taiwan of their Chinese identity? And why is she so outraged about Western meddling on the subject? I had the pleasure to sit down with Dr. Huang Zhixian, a commentator and former host of the TV show Ask About Power in the Night. Huang Boshi, Nihao, Fitan Gansin, Jesho, Munda Taifa. Women like Tantan, Ningzo, Jig, Dian Shi, Ping Lun, Jim, Muda, Jiang, the Yiko, Kanka, the Jing Li Ba, Tong Arling, Yichin, Samuel, and Shiba, Ning, Kashi, Dandu, Chu, Jig, Yevon, Dachin, Jig, Jim, Mujig, or Arling, Yichon, and the Liu Yifen, Jim, Punong, Zai, Zola, Dachin, Ning, Hai, Ji, Shi, the Zai, Fa, Sheng, Banin, the Jig, Wu Tai, Fang, Dala, Yu, Guan, Shang, or the Chita, the Jig, Yichi, Yukon, and the Fang, Shin, Ning, the Hui, Banin, the Guan, Dian, Banin, the 些想法和立场，在努力的发出来。呃，跟我们讲一下，为什么会受到这样的打压？您认为这是不是一个打压？为什么会受到这样严重的打压？呃，谢谢，谢谢主持人。Thank you。呃，这个打压是一个连续，不是单一的。There has always been suppression. It didn't happen just once. The last episode was in 2019. At the streets forum in Xiamen. I said that our generation should bring Taiwan back home. I think we as Chinese should follow the principle of the one country, two systems, which holds the greatest goodwill for the Taiwan region. When I said that on the stage, there were actually more than a thousand audience members. And I could feel that everyone was on the edge of shedding tears. I also said I knew after saying the above words, I would be attacked when I returned to Taiwan, but I had to speak out. As soon as I got off the stage, Taiwan's green cam media started to attack me. About two days after returning to Taiwan, the program was suspended. The explanation was very straightforward. My program would be suppressed due to the pressure from multiple sides, including political ones. My program is the only TV program that maintains the stance of the Chinese people in Taiwan's history, that a large viewership can see in the mainstream media, including broadcasting and even print media. I follow what I truly believe in filming the program. So when I first saw President Xi's speech at the meeting to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the issuance of the message to compatriots in Taiwan, and he spoke to the people of Taiwan with an impassioned and sincere tone, my tears fell and I could resonate with him so much. He talked about China's history, the emotional attachment with, and the appeals and expectations for the people of Taiwan, and what he's willing and eager to do for Taiwan after reunification. He also talked about the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. I know what touches me will touch Taiwan too. 可是您知道吗？这么重要的一个演讲，台湾的媒体没有一个。Did you know that such an important speech was not covered by any media outlets in Taiwan? Some pro-green media may have only broadcasted a shot of his face for about two seconds and then started criticizing him. So people didn't know what he had said. When I broadcasted his 80-minute speech in my program, I didn't add anything. I cut it into eight clips and aired ten minutes each day. The TV station told me that there would be no ratings if I did it this way. I said it didn't matter; you could blame it on me. Then he said that advertisers would stop paying for advertisements. Japanese and American companies would stop their advertisements. I said it didn't matter; just let me broadcast it once, and you could fire me after that. Then I was told the official in charge had called to complain. It didn't matter. 
I would like to tell you that it was also the first time for all guests in the studio to watch the speech. They were all moved. When the program went on the air, I walked the streets at night and saw ordinary people watching Xi's speech in my program at noodle shops, restaurants, and roadside stalls. I know I have made it. At that time, I knew in my heart that my program would have an impact on them. Do you know how Taiwan's media covered the Hong Kong riots? They only reported how people were arrested by the police. Then I found out all relevant videos. Other media broadcasted the police arresting people and they were bad. But I showed in my program that there were three rioters beating the police. I didn't need to say anything more. So I think this is what 都没有想到的，因为我们没有想到，就是在一个在一个所谓的民主的地方，所谓的有这种发声的自由啊，他们会这样把一些跟他们直接相关的信息，就这样，要么是屏蔽掉，要么是剪出只言片语，把上下文全部去掉。这个怎么会发生在全世界或者是美国鼓吹的这样的一个民主的地地区呢？这是必然的呀，因为。That is inevitable, because Western democratic electoral system is in a match with capitalism. It has a very big internal flaw. The system will give rise to populism and be controlled by capital. Then the capital will be intertwined with politics through interest groups. Taiwan's situation is much worse because Taiwan was under Japan's colonial rule for 50 years. In those 50 years, Japan killed 600,000 people in Taiwan. Japan was very, very reluctant to leave Taiwan at that time. My ancestors came from southern Fujian to Taiwan hundreds of years ago. My father and my grandparents all went through Japan's colonial rule. We know what the situation of Japan's colonial rule in Taiwan was. After the civil war, Japan took advantage of the division to control Taiwan, not to mention the American control of Taiwan society. People who haven't lived in Taiwan and observed deeply can't feel that. Even the relevant Japanese association in Taiwan has called to show concerns for a small TV program like mine, and Japanese companies would stop advertisements. What worries Japan most about my program? The July 7th incident. Of course, I would talk about the July 7th incident. You would find that other TV programs in Taiwan don't talk about it, but I did. But the ratings didn't drop. They felt strange. They thought that the host is not a star like Lin Chilin. The eloquence is not that good as well. The content is very serious and not a mainstream topic in Taiwan. They would also think that the program is boring and lengthy every time. But why are the ratings so good? I would talk about the July 7th incident on every Taiwan retrocession day. I also talked about the Nanjing massacre. 对啊，为什么收视率这么这么好？这说明了什么？你觉得说明了什么 ？That is what they are afraid to see. 那为什么台湾的民众需要这样的信息？他们对这样的信息感兴趣？对。Before my program was launched, no one believed that a program with such a position could survive. Nobody was optimistic, especially I'm not a professional anchor. I've had so many different experiences and occupations. How could I succeed? And my program supports reunification. Sadly, those who support reunification in Taiwan are treated as cockroaches. People attack it when they see one. 所谓的统派就是主张祖国统一的这一派，对，就是主张我们是中国人，主张我们。Yes, we believe that we are Chinese. China must be reunified. Taiwan and the mainland must be reunified. When I was young, everyone supported reunification, but now those who truly support reunification may only account for two percent, three percent, or five percent of the population. They face suppression in all walks of life, not only in politics and media. Why are they suppressed? Many audiences share with me their thoughts. Some have said, "I haven't dared to say that I'm Chinese for a long time. We used to say that we are Chinese, but now in Taiwan, people say we Chi, we Taiwanese. We do self-examination when we speak. 
When Taiwan audiences turned on their TVs and watched my program on the mainstream channel, they would discover that the anchor took the standpoint as a dignified and upright Chinese. And I have repeatedly stressed that I only speak the truth. Everyone knows about my background. I won't lie. I won't please those in power either. What I do is non-mainstream. I don't care whether it's mainstream or people hate it or not. Everyone believes that I'm not a person who likes to whitewash issues. I always show reality and truth in my program. The audience will know it when they see it. People in Taiwan like watching TV programs, including political programs. These kind of programs normally have four commercial breaks in an hour. At commercial breaks, people would switch channels. Therefore, at the commercial breaks of those pro-independence programs, the audience may think, hey, why not check what the reunification clown Huang Chixian is doing? Then they switched to watch my program and said, haha, look at them, they're so low. After the three-minute break, they returned to the previous program. But at the next commercial break, they couldn't help but switch back to my program again. My program lasted for two hours every time. The audience switched to watch me eight times a day. My programs were aired five days a week, so they watched it 40 times a week. Then they could find how different the same event was reported by pro-independence media and my program. But in my program, they could see that we present the facts in an open manner. Then how did it turn out? Every young people and pro-independence activists were persuaded by me. They were only exposed to one-sided information before, so they believed that way. We presented with the whole facts, they started to rethink. So, Yes, when I was young, what I learned is that we should revive Chinese culture and strive to promote national reunification. National identity and ethnic identity are established at a very young age. It's hard to change when you grow up. Later, I went abroad to study and visited many places. In Europe or America, I find that they are all making efforts to shape their children's national and ethnic identities. When I was young, children were taught to be a bright and good student and an upright and decent Chinese person. That was written on a couplet and hung on the wall in every primary school. Inside the classroom, four core values of propriety, Wretchedness, honesty, and the sense of shame were posted above the blackboard. We had many textbooks about China. We all learned about the whole development of Chinese history. And Taiwan's history was a part of Chinese history. We all knew that Taiwan is a part of China. After we learned Chinese geography, which included Taiwan's geography, we continued to learn the geography of other countries. But that had changed when Li Tanghui was in office. He started to talk about the sadness of being a member of Taiwan people, saying that he was Japanese before his 20s. As the leader of Taiwan, he said that we should get to know Taiwan. Therefore, the children's first textbook became Introduction to Taiwan. It was advocated that it was necessary for Taiwan to be the main subject of learning. Why do people only learn about the Yellow River? They might as well learn about Taiwan's Timesway River. Everyone thought it made sense, but that is brainwashing using the salami slicing tactics. Mm. Let me give you an example to show how far it went. The textbook has mentioned this. Li Bai, a poet from the Tang Dynasty of our country, has a poem that reads, Long Long is my whitening hair. When Chen Shui Bian was in office, he issued a condemnation to the publishing house, demanding that the expression must be changed. What were the changes? It was changed as Chinese poet Li Bai wrote a poem which reads, Long Long is my whitening hair. There are two missing expressions in the new version. 
our country was changed into China, which means that China has nothing to do with us. Secondly, he was very careful and deleted Tang Dynasty. Even the term Tang Dynasty had to be removed. We can see actions being carried out step by step by changing the textbooks and controlling the media, including news reports. Even in weather forecasts, they used to use expressions such as Shanghai on the mainland or Beijing on the mainland. Then Chen Shui-bian ordered relevant authorities to use only Shanghai of China or Beijing of China instead of Shanghai on the mainland or Beijing on the mainland.这个你刚才讲的这个就是把这个中国这个文化认同一点点给它退去那么在这个过程中呢我们现在看到一个非常重要的外部力量在干预在推波逐澜就是美国那么我想知道美国口口声声说台湾是一个很重要的经济体系是
有进攻性，越来越有侵略性，包括中国不断的去威胁有一些国家的政客呀，因为他们要和台湾搞这个更加高级的，或者是近似于官方的联系啊，就是大陆，我或者北京的一些外交官或者高级官员说的一些话，都会打上一些标签啊，什么威胁啦，什么进攻性啦等等。现在好像有一种黑白颠倒，是吧？因果颠倒的这个逻辑在里面，我不知道你有没有观察到这一点。I have studied in both the UK and US, and also worked in the US. The US is ridiculous. Taiwan is China's territory. The One China principle is the basis for any country to establish diplomatic relations with China. That principle is our bottom line, which cannot be crossed. If you don't recognize Taiwan as a part of China, I'm sorry, we can't be friends. You don't recognize Taiwan as a part of China. I'm sorry, we can't be friends. He is also a world leader because the United States in the United Nations does not think Taiwan is a sovereign country. The United States does not think Taiwan is a sovereign country. Yes, this is a so-called sovereign. Yes, that follows the international law. We should follow the maximum consensus that comes out of the UN. How did Beijing restore its lawful UN seat? The UN decided to expel Taiwan in 1971 and acknowledged that there is only one China and Taiwan is a part of China. The three China-US joint communiques clearly recognized the One China principle. The principle is simple. Taiwan is a part of China, and we Chinese solve our own affairs across the streets. What is America's business here? Is there any problem that Chinese military aircrafts and warships patrol in our own territorial airspace and waters? Yet you can see the U.S., Canada, and Australia have all come to say that we're threatening them. 而事实上，中国的军军机、中国的军舰到那边去，正是因为台独的抬头，正是因为外部世界的干预，所以就这个这个因果好像完全被颠倒了。Yes, Chinese military aircrafts must patrol there because the U.S. or other clown countries do not abide by their formal diplomatic consensus with China. Establishing diplomatic relations with China means recognizing Taiwan as Chinese territory. So how can you attempt to recognize or semi-officially recognize Taiwan as a country? This disrespects China. Breaks promises and violates international law. What the U.S. is doing or leading, whether in Taiwan, the South China Sea, or other provinces, are a violation of international law. The U.S. asks China to follow its own rogue law. China says no. We have and should abide by the international laws. The U.S. does not abide by international law, so doesn't that make a rogue state or bully? So now there is such a future possibility that some think that China has already confirmed that some day, some time, it will be one country and one nation. If it is not confirmed, it will be used as a force to confirm it. How do you look at it? For example, you said that Xi Jinping's most noble act is not to use any force to solve the problems of family members. But these are all confirmed because the United States wants to use force to solve the problems of the family. 十一六的问题，所以全世界要来保护台湾、干干预台湾的问题，就很简单。请问一下，台湾是不是中国的领土 ？It's very simple. Is Taiwan a part of China? They deliberately avoid that and pretend that Taiwan is an independent country. If Taiwan is an independent country, then their logic makes sense. But Taiwan's not. So how can they deliberately misrepresent Taiwan as a country? There's the old Chinese saying, calling a deer a horse, which means distorting the truth. It's simple. Taiwan is China's territory and China must be reunified. The hope for peaceful reunification is among our own families and compatriots. Above family love, there are national security and national interests. 
What are the national interests? Sovereignty and territorial integrity, and these cannot be conceded. National interests cannot be conceded because the enemy would push and press. There is a saying in Hawking dialect: "It's easier to dig in soft soil." Based on my understanding and interactions with Westerners, I think you can see this too. The Chinese are gentle and humble and believe in mutual trust. Westerners or Americans' logic is the one who's humble is afraid of me, so I'll keep pushing your boundaries till I reach your bottom line. Here's a fact: you come to my backyard carrying a gun. According to American rules, I can take out my gun and defend myself. Did you hear that in America it's legal to kill trespassers? Why doesn't the U.S. come out today and announce that Taiwan is not part of China's territory? Which country could publicly say that? The division of the country is a past tragedy. We need to end this tragedy. Our country must be reunified. If countries don't need to be reunified, then Spain should recognize Catalonia's independence. Then why doesn't the EU recognize Catalonia as an independent country? So this is the two-pronged approach. How could I say? Mind your own business first before intervening in ours. How could I say? Mind your own business first before intervening in ours. Taiwan has always been a part of China. What is there to argue? Shameless, purely shameless. I'm furious about it. I want to ask countries such as Lithuania, Czech Republic, Poland, or the U.S. Which country does Taiwan belong to? Is Taiwan a part of Poland or the EU? Taiwan is a part of China. Chinese mainland and China's Taiwan could sit down and solve our problems by ourselves. It's simple. Don't meddle in our family's affairs. What they have done has violated international law. Very much, Huang Bo Shi. Thank you. Thank you.